going to spend the next 100 days in the heart of the Amazonia jungle, driven by desperation and hope. My wife's life hangs in the balance, struck by a lethal virus, unleashed by our quest for a cure. But amidst the unforgiving green hell, secrets lie waiting to be uncovered, holding the key to salvation. This is my journey, my battle against time in the spirits of Amazonia. I embarked on my journey into the heart of the Amazonia jungle with my trusted guide Pedro, navigating its rivers in search of a cure. Suddenly, we were ambushed by a group of tribesmen. Caught off guard, I felt the piercing pain of an arrow in my chest. As darkness closed in, strange visions flashed before me, and a prominent figure emerged. Was he the cause of this chaos or my only hope of survival? Mysteriously, I woke up in the middle of nowhere. Gathering what items I could find nearby, I set out to find Pedro and the boat. Reaching the riverbanks, I discovered something horribly wrong with the boat. Upon closer inspection, I was greeted with even graver news. Pedro had succumbed to the lethal arrows. Stung by the sudden turn Hello? of events, I tried using the radio okay. for help to no avail. Swiftly entering survival mode, I salvaged whatever I could from the crash site. Not wanting to leave Pedro's body unattended, I crafted a pyre for a proper burial. As night approached, I hurried to construct a basic shelter. However, inattentiveness led me to brush against a poisonous tree. Acting quickly, I searched for a remedy and found a plant that seemed promising. Infusing its leaves with a bandage, I applied it to my wound, momentarily alleviating the pain. Despite my injury, I continued tirelessly gathering resources for shelter. With time slipping away, I reluctantly settled for the night using a bed salvaged from the boat. Rested and refreshed for the new day ahead, I was surprised by an unexpected visitor, which startled me and triggered some unexpected reflex actions. Anyways, I continued setting up my shelter, gathering the required resources. I also cooked up some broth to sustain me while I worked on the other tasks. And after completing my shelter, I decided to take a quick nap before crafting a set of armor. For that, I needed a banana leaf, along with some ropes and a few sticks to craft it. I started off the morning with a couple of scrumptious broths, made from my new and improved turtle container, then I picked up the previous day. Then it was off to search the jungle. Along the way, I spotted some interesting plants. These types of plants were exactly what I needed for fixing up a few bandages. As I journeyed further into the jungle, I encountered a tribesman, and I knew this wasn't going to be a friendly encounter. So I readied my spear and aimed for his head to the best of my ability. Would you believe it? With my first shot, I managed to nail him on the head and took him down instantly, skinning his body to gain much needed materials and swapping out my weapons for the ones he carried. After glancing at my watch, I knew my carb intake was quite low and I needed to find something to replenish that pronto. I scoured the land looking for some type of fruit to help. While doing so, I found some orange colored mushrooms, larvae, and finally, I spotted some bananas on a tree. Boy, was I relieved. I just gobbled it down without even thinking. Considering I was on the hunt for food, I proceeded to try my luck with taking down the wildlife in the area. For one unfortunate capybara, he was on the menu for the night. I let loose my spear, hoping for a headshot, but only managing to get my spear lodged in the capybara's side. Thinking that I had lost my chance for supper, I pressed on following his trail. Surprisingly, I was able to take him down, but not before taking care of another tribesman that happened to cross my path. On day four, as I ventured through the marshy swamp area, I came across a large structure that seemed to be a sunken steamboat. Here, I went ahead exploring every nook and cranny, hoping to find anything to help me on my quest to find a cure. What I did manage to find were a whole bunch of old chests with loads of different useful items inside. At the very top of the boat in the wheelhouse, I found another old chest, but this one in particular housed the map of the area I was in. The next day, I set off to find the local tribal village, hoping to locate the chief and get some answers not too far upstream. I spotted signs of human activity, confirming I was close to a village. Following a trail into the jungle, I stumbled upon a small village, and there sat the chief himself. After speaking to the chief, I sensed his reluctance to trust outsiders, as he gave me a few tasks to complete in order to gain his trust. With that disappointing news, I decided to head back to base and contemplate my next move. Before immersing myself in the tasks set out by the chief, I decided to equip my base with everything I needed to sustain myself in the 
most challenging environment. Firstly, I set up a sled to help with the logistics of materials. Then, I worked on setting up a basic water collector and a few large crop lots to grow some fruits to provide the nutrients I required. I also began experimenting with mud structures. I crafted a mud mixer, which enabled me to process mud from the river into bricks that I could use for crafting. Afterwards, I worked on setting up a mud charcoal furnace with the mud bricks obtained from the mixer. I folded up with a bunch of sticks found nearby and went out to look for some dry leaves as I was low on fire starting material. Finally, I was able to light up the furnace and sealed it off with a mud brick as I waited for the process to take place. On day 8, I began the tasks that would help me to build trust with the chief. One of them was finding lost children in the jungle and returning them to the village. Fortunately, there was a kid close to my campsite whom I found and carried on my shoulder all the way back to the village. The other task, which I spotted nearby the village, was to free captive spirits by cutting their bodies down from the trees and performing a proper burial ritual. I then spotted another kid close to the village and took him back to the chief where he was once again safe and sound. With just enough time to search for one more kid, I found one who seemed to be some distance away from the village. However, as it grew dark, I started to freak out a bit, especially when an enemy tribal warrior began tracking me down. In my panic, I ran straight into an anthill and accidentally lost the kid I was carrying. Despite my efforts to find him, it was too difficult to see anything in the dark. So I decided to craft a bed near the local village and called it a night. Things didn't start off so well on day 9. You see, I made my way back to the kid that I had lost the previous night. However, I unknowingly stepped on something poisonous that completely messed me up, giving me such a high fever that my body was slowly shutting down. Unfortunately, I had no idea what to do and eventually passed out. Waking up from that, I was faced with more problems. I had some type of worm growing on both of my arms. The good news is, I knew how to get rid of them and I had the resources to do just that. Then it was all about panic the wounds with a couple of bandages. Though, I was still in trouble. My body was tired and struggled to keep up with the tasks needed to be done. I just had to do something or I was going to pass out again. I tried working on a bit, but it seemed beyond my capabilities at the time. So, I turned to my one last hope, finding mushrooms that would help give me some secret juice to keep going. I searched and searched to no avail, but just before it was all going to go horribly wrong, I found hope in the little mushrooms found on a tree. With that little boost of energy, I grabbed the kid and cautiously made my way back to the village. It was one heck of a day peeps and I was glad it was over. After surviving the night, I refreshed myself Disgusting. and tossed up my water Ugh. by drinking from a nearby river. To fill Ugh. up my tummy with a nutritious meal, I crafted a small fire under one of the structures I found. Then I placed some fish on the grill that I retrieved from a nearby fishing trap. Later on, as I tried to replenish my nutrients and restock on items for the tasks ahead, I thought it was a good idea to grab some grub on the go. That's when I spotted a peccary nearby. With my bow and arrow, I was able to take it down and then skinned it for some valuable resources. Just when everything seemed to be going right, I decided to experiment by eating raw fish. While it was normally possible to eat raw fish, somehow here it didn't really work out for me and gave me a bad case of food poisoning. Although it wasn't that bad to be honest, I kinda managed it rather well and continued prepping up. The next next two days, I continued with the quest of gaining the chief's trust. I found yet another lost child in the jungle, sitting on a bamboo bridge. I chased after him, trying to catch and return him to his village. However, with a full inventory, I had to let go of some of my items to get the job done. Once I shedded off the weight, I tried a second time and made the long trip back to the village. I then spotted a legend stone, which provided useful information that would help with a special quest. Following that, I helped set another spirit free by crafting a pyre. And rescued a kid that I found nearby, walking a thousand miles all the way back to the village to which he belonged. Returning to base, I had an unexpected encounter with a caiman. I swiftly readied my bow. I released the arrow, hitting the caiman with precision. At that moment, I thought the caiman was done for, so I decided to take a closer look. To my surprise, the caiman lunged at me. Its jaws dangerously broke through my armor. Quickly, I took aim again, this time eliminating the caiman with a second shot. Unfazed by the attack, of the caiman, I prepared a fire to cook up some broth for a nutritious meal. Afterward, I began building a few new additions to my campsite. I added a second frame 
attached a wooden platform to it and finish things off with a mud storage box. Continuing my efforts to make life more convenient here in the jungle, I went ahead with processing more mud bricks. This gave me the ability to access more advanced materials as I was now able to craft the mud forge. To give this forge a test run, I grabbed some charcoal from the charcoal furnace and cooked up a metal can that I had stored away in my storage box. Knowing that I had a long wait for the forge to smelt the can, I decided to go out hunting for fresh food. Unfortunately, the capybara that I had spotted didn't stand a chance. However, as I went in to skim the animal, a scorpion attacked me from out of nowhere, sending my body into overdrive. I quickly patched myself up and made my way back to the base as quickly as I could. So, it was back to the quest of gaining trust. I found another spirit that needed to be set free as I proceeded to craft a pyre for the ritual, before stumbling upon a legend inscribed on stone. Something about a deep dive from what I could gather. Deep I also dive. came across an injured tribe member. I had no idea why he couldn't walk back to the base to receive treatment as he seemed quite capable of walking but unfortunately I did not have the right supplies to fix him up and sadly he had to spend another night in the cold and dark cave. But I wasn't done just yet. I found another legend on a stone and spotted a nearby camp with some enemy tribesmen hanging around. A couple of perfectly placed shots to those coconuts took them out quite easily leaving me with a few sparrows to choose from. On day 17 things took an interesting turn as I continued with the quest. I finally managed to help a wounded tribe member found in a cave near my campsite. However, as I left the cave, I inadvertently oh. stepped on a scorpion and ended up on the wrong side of its venom. Battling to cope with its toxins coursing through my bloodstream, I hurried back to my campsite and quickly whipped up a bowl of bone broth, which sorted me out in a jiffy. But my troubles didn't end there. While searching for more quests to complete, I stumbled upon a spider or something of the sort. And this time, I was some distance away from my base. My body began shutting down rapidly, but I pressed on, desperately searching for something to help me, even taking down an enemy tribesman in the process. Eventually, I couldn't go any longer and passed out near the river. Thankfully, I didn't drown and managed to make it out of that situation, although I still had those pesky worms to deal with. Plucking them out with a few fish bones, I patched up the wounds with bandages as I made my way back to my campsite. But the ordeal wasn't over yet. Once again, I was struck by something venomous and I barely made it back to my campsite before losing consciousness. With the arrival of day 18, I was in need of a restoration, plucking out the worms from my body and patching up the wounds. Then I focused on cooking some broth to fill me up with all its goodness and get my body back into tip-top shape. But you know, the jungle is relentless. While I was out and about, I got too close to something and was bitten again for what felt like the 100th time. The good news is that I was close to the tribal village, so I wasted no time as I backtracked and rested off the fever. Finally, after a long rest, I was in good health, so I continued with the tasks ahead. I proceeded to craft and prepare for another burial ritual. Then, I made my way around the jungle and had an encounter with a wandering enemy tribesman. The thing is, I was curious about why these guys were roaming around the jungle. Like, where did they come from? I was pretty certain that these weren't random encounters, so I decided to investigate further. Lo and behold, I stumbled upon a huge enemy camp. There, I found one of the tribal women in a bamboo cave. I swiftly ran to her aid and took down the cage, setting her free. Afterward, I made my way to one of the previously visited tribesmen who was spotted in a cave. As luck would have it, I was able to find something that would do the trick in helping out this poor little fellow. I then journeyed further into the jungle and came across another large enemy camp with another tribal woman as their captive. As I got closer to the heart of the camp, I noticed that there was a legend written on stone. It had to do with dead monkey spirits from what I gathered. Anyways, I could I couldn't linger, I needed to work as quickly as I could to set loose the women in the cage and focused on setting up a bed as I rushed to beat the effects of the venom in my body. Fortunately, I made it just in time and took a well-deserved nap. Waking up the following morning, I realized that I was quite a distance away from my campsite, so I decided to work on crafting a fire to boost morale and cook some broth to replenish the nutrients that were lost. There was also an opportunity to obtain a hearty, protein-rich meal when a wayward peccary presented itself. 
itself. Well, of course, I just had to get it and relied on my bow and arrow skills to take it down with the least amount of effort. Once fully restored, I made the long journey back to my campsite, traversing through the treacherous jungle and keeping an eye out for any dangers that lurked within. Alrighty, what completely went over my head was that I could gain even more trust by taking down the enemy camps. So, over the next few days, I tracked down most of the previously visited campsites in order to tear them down for additional points. At the same time, I placed various outposts at these camps just to have something to fall back on when things got a little out of hand. I tracked down loads of these types of camps, from large ones with tons of structures to tiny ones nestled in the heart of the jungle, all meeting the same fate as I was in the business of total annihilation. I was also on the lookout for more legend stones. These things took up most of my time as they were pretty difficult to find Seems and scattered all night. over the jungle. Some were found in caves and I was surprised to figure out that jaguars were lurking in caves as well. I found that out the hard way, being jumped by a freaking massive cat. I almost pooped myself to be totally honest, but somehow I managed to scare it off. After the attack of the beast, I was back on the road continuing my drive to gain more trust as I found more camps to destroy, more legends that I was able to find and more little screeds that needed to be dealt with. Thankfully, I had somewhat of a decent shot. It was time to take on the final two tasks before returning to the chief. The first legend was to take care of an evil spirit. Right, there we go. I do have... Who have solved Ooh, the problem of the howling spirits. Got rid of the evil spirit, but it... And the second legend that I had to take care of was a task that I had to tackle at night. That was to take care of a large albino caveman. Who could it be? Is it that? It is. Okay. Yo. You're huge, buddy. <gasps> Oof. Never mind. You need more than uh, two. Oh my goodness. It's coming. <gasps> Look at the last one here. Hey. Buddy. Albino came in. All right. So I need to harvest you, of course, and take you back to the chief. With the completion of the 800 trust points, it was time to return oh, to the no chief, man. who then presented me with special herbs and a ritual that I had to participate in. For this challenge, I needed to grow specific flowers to aid the wounded tribesmen <laughs> in their recovery for me to progress. Oh, what? What the freak? How are we gonna help him? We got these jaguars on us. Oh, man. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, yo, 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 yo. Wait, yeah. I ain't entirely sure. He said something. Ooh-wee. Oh, that was so close. So freaking close. Right. I have no idea which blood. Oh. That was so close. You think this would be easy because they super slow. But no. And when you need water, there's no freaking water. Where's the darn thing, man? Thinking is that one. Hey, come on, come on. Yes! There we go, buddy. <sighs> one more. It is. Oh, man. What now? It doesn't help me. Holy crap. Oh, it's Puma's only. Yo, 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 relax. Okay, it's not too bad. It's just that I need to... Let me see. Oh, that looks like it. Wait, wait. Isn't that the one? Yeah! Not as much. Jeez, you need a gigantic one? After completing the ritual, I woke up in a whole new area, acquiring a trust token that should help me gain trust 
from the local village. Spending the night at the cartel's outpost, I decided to conduct further investigation the following morning. Upon closer inspection, I discovered an abundance of supplies that proved to be useful, ranging from painkillers to canned food. Additionally, I stumbled upon some intriguing Wonderful. information. It appeared that these individuals were poisoning the rivers to eradicate the local tribes. As I continued my search, I came across a map of the area and an antenna, which I found while scavenging through a nearby jeep. After concluding the investigation, I headed off towards the local village to speak with his chief. After speaking with him, it was clear that he also had trust issues, meaning it would take a whole lot of work to earn his trust. Armed with this knowledge, I realized I was in it for the long haul. Therefore, I proceeded to set up a shelter nearby. The next day, I started cleaning up the nearby river from the toxic waste. It was quite challenging to reach some of the plastic containers as they were placed in hard to reach spots. Things took a turn for the worse when I accidentally fell into the toxic river. However, I persevered, collecting all the containers and building a ritual fire to cleanse the river. Just I also couldn't figure out where that itself. darn voice was coming from. It must have taken me the entire day to figure it out. But eventually, I did. It was a lost kid who was sitting inside the waterfall. I grabbed the little kiddo and returned him to the village. The day started with me going on a hunt for food and materials to stock up on. Nearby, I spotted a few peccaries ripe for the kill. With my bow in hand, I aimed with precision at their vulnerable points and took them down. Gathering the spoils of the morning's hunt, I returned to my camp to cook bone broth with the last bit of water that I had. Later, I found out that in order for the river to purify in a specific area after the cleansing ritual, it would take two full days. That was not going to work out for me. I needed water as soon as possible. My only hope was to return to the cartel's outpost, where I was able to wash myself and fill up both of my bidens before setting up a small fire to help obtain drinkable water. However, my plans were interrupted when I crossed paths with a Wahara warrior, who disagreed with my presence in the area. Unfortunately for him, it didn't end well. As I was about to start cleaning the river, I accidentally drank the toxic water, sending my body into a frenzy as I vomited uncontrollably. I had to race back to the bed I had crafted at the cartel's place and rested while waiting for the effects to fade away. On day 34, I decided to return to the village. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it, but the river was finally cleared of toxic waste. I was immensely grateful for this, as it was going to make life here so much better. Swiftly, I gathered the materials to craft a small fire, got some broth going, and focused on replenishing the nutrients that I had lost the previous day. Later on, I went ahead and set up a few things that would help me while spending my time here. I worked on crafting a mud mixer, a crop plot, and a water collector. Having completed the items I was working on, my next goal was to obtain a fresh set of armor before venturing out. I scavenged around for the required items and replaced my broken armor. Afterwards, I set off in search of bananas, not only to help with my carb intake, but also to obtain seeds for growing my own banana tree. Later that day, and on to day 36, I focused on cleaning more of the river from the toxic waste, picking up plastic containers and performing the cleansing ritual. Additionally, I found a lost kid close to the cartel's outpost at the entrance of a cave. I managed to grab him without hassle and carried him back to the village where he belonged. The previous day, while trying to catch the kid, I thought I saw a tribe member in distress. So, I returned to the same cave to try to help the tribesman. But for some reason, he wasn't around and I searched everywhere for him. The good news is, I stumbled upon a legend stone while in the cave. Anyways, there were still a lot of things to do, like taking this kid back to the village. Boy, was this an interesting journey. As I was making my way back to the village, I sort of lost my way and wandered into a large enemy camp. Fortunately, we went unnoticed and then tried to find our way back to the village. Of course, I just had to. I mean, who would it? Yep, I returned to the large village that I happened to find the previous day. After dealing with a warrior on guard duty, I was surprised to see that this camp had captured not one, but two women from the village. So, I set them free and began tearing down the Wahara camp one structure at a time. Once I was done with the demolition of the camp, I thought it was a good idea to set up an outpost of my own in the event that I needed a quick pit stop. Well, here's the thing. It seemed to be a normal day as I strolled along to another cleanup site. All of a sudden, I was jumped by a jaguar. Man, did I flip out? I had no control over my body. I was just frantically throwing jabs with my spear in the hopes that it would flee. And luckily enough, it did. Anyways, with that out of the way, I could focus on the task at hand. And that was to clean an area of toxic water to gain access to another 
the legend stone. Later that day, I followed an enemy warrior for a bit, which led me to a smaller Wahara campsite that I just had to take down. For the next few days, I chilled at my campsite. There were a few additions that I wanted to make and also some new items to check out. Firstly, I needed storage to store all of my excess items. And secondly, I wanted to build the mud water filter now that I had access to bamboo. So, off I went to collect the resources required to craft these items. Within a few minutes, I finished off my storage box and then I focused on the water filter, which required a bit more time and resources to complete. But eventually, I got the job done. All I can say is, this was next level stuff. That's how good it was. Following that, I decided to work on extending my shelter by adding in a few more frames. Then, I got together a sled to transport the material more efficiently and finish things off by crafting a food dryer for an extra source of sustenance. After adding a few more finishing touches to my little base, I decided to go out and get some meat to test out the drying rack. While waiting for the meat to dry, I went ahead and crafted a huge fish trap, which required a ton of sticks to complete. Once finished, I set it up with bait to see if it would actually catch any fish. Later that day, I was surprised to find not one, but two mega-sized fish, which gave me a ton of resources when harvested. For the next few days, I set out to tackle some of the tasks at hand. I began by doing my bit to save the planet, cleaning up the toxic material from the nearby rivers and performing a ritual to ask for nature's blessing. Moving on, I came across a couple of legend stones as I searched for more cleanup sites in the area. Additionally, I helped some of the wounded tribe members that I came into contact with during my quest. I also destroyed a few Wahara campsites that I found along the way and set up an outpost since I was quite a distance from the village. On day 47, while I was out and about, I had an unexpected visitor. And boy, was this animal truly vicious. Fortunately, I was able to fend it off. After dealing with that situation, it was time to gather my things as I prepared to embark on the long journey back to the base. I walked for miles on end, traversing caves, thick, dense jungles, and even rivers and valleys, eventually making my way back safe and sound. Alrighty, I wanted to try out the pet taming side of things. So I decided to prepare a few things in advance. I needed a whole lot of fruit, so I crafted a few more crop plots and planted more banana trees. Then it was off to find some bamboo to craft the blowpipe needed to unlock all the items required to catch and keep my pets. Luckily, I managed to find some bamboo at the cartel's camp and got myself the blowpipe. I also went about grabbing the poisonous frogs needed. I wasn't really sure if they had to be dead or alive, but I sort of just went for it and things didn't turn out so well for me. Oh yeah, there was also so this kitty cat wanting some cuddles. Unfortunately, at the time, I wasn't in the mood. Now that I had gathered most of the items required, I started by crafting a frog stretcher, which would enable me to make poison darts to knock out small animals. Then it was time to take care of the animal pen. I needed a spot to keep the animals I wanted to tame. Fortunately, there was a big open space close to my base and it was relatively safe. It was there that I decided to set up my animal pen and gather the resources to build it, complete with a water and feeding trough. It was finally time to tame my pets. To do this correctly, I had to use the blowpipe to knock them out, then use some rope to tie their legs, preventing them from running away, and finally carry them to the animal pen where it was safe to release them. To be honest, it wasn't that difficult at all, and I managed to capture a mating pair, which was a bonus. From there, I proceeded to fill up the feeding trough with all the fruits I could find and made sure that they were well taken care of. The next morning, I went to check on my pets and found out that they had eaten all of the food from the feeding trough and I pretty much ran out of supplies. So I had to go out to try to find whatever I could to fill up their truck. While I was on the lookout, a freaking jaguar jumped me out of nowhere and startled me. I was so stunned by this that I had trouble locating my bow. Luckily, I eventually got myself together and took down the jaguar. After that encounter, I proceeded with the task of finding food for my pets and went ahead replacing my broken armor. On day 52, I began the search for legend stones, heading to one of the previous ponds that I had cleaned and waited for the toxic waste to dissipate. Then I made my way through the jungle, taking out some Muhara tribesmen before diving through a waterfall filled with toxic waste to retrieve the second legend in the cave. However, after pulling off that stunt, I contracted a fever, which took a huge toll on my body. I was losing energy rapidly, and the only thing I could do was move as quickly as possible to a nearby outpost. Recovered from the fever, I set out to find more legend stones, this time looking
located one close to one of the kids I had rescued. Unfortunately, luck was not on my side. As I was searching for more stones, I was bitten by something venomous, and my vitals began dropping rapidly once again. I had to act quickly. Nearby, I spotted a small enemy camp, which I destroyed hastily, then used whatever materials I could to build a bed to rest off the effects of the venom. Not too far from where I spent the night, I spotted a point of interest. However, there was nothing particularly interesting, except for a tribesman who seemed to be a bit too curious. He made for a good bone broth ingredient, to say the least. Later, I found another two legend stones, one in a cave which also housed an injured tribal member that I was able to help with charcoal, and the second was behind a waterfall that completed the first set of legends. After camping overnight at a nearby outpost, I stocked up on some food and went to the coordinates to find a bracelet somewhere in the river. For some reason, the question mark didn't appear on my map, which was why I was grateful for the internet and the community. While I was on my way back to the village, I unknowingly stepped on a spider twice. So, with its toxic venom in my bloodstream, I knew I had little time to sort myself out. I then decided to do the sensible thing and crash a nearby Wuhara campsite that needed a tad bit of reorganization. Ah oh yes, guess what? On my way back to the village, I was bitten again, but this time by a snake. However, I decided to test my luck and push through the obstacles of the jungle as I made my way through its tough terrain. Eventually, I returned to the chief and presented to him the bracelet. Afterwards, I headed off to my little base for a much needed rest. Later that day, I was alerted to the news that Tammy and Tiny had a baby and I just had to go have a look-see. Boy, was it the darnest thing I'd ever seen. I continued hunting down more legend stones, finding one that was sort of easy to spot close to a river. The other was a bit tricky, tucked away in a corner at the end of the river. Thing is, this river was full of toxic waste. I did manage to get the legend quite easily. However, getting out of the spot was a bit of a challenge. Unfortunately, there was no easy way out, causing me to fall into the river and pick up a fever. I quickly built a basic bed and rested until the fever wore off. I then moved on to find two more legends, one in a cave and another that was some distance away, close to a little puddle of water. Nice. As usual, while wandering around in the jungle, I got zapped by another rattlesnake, which I took down out of frustration. I then turned my attention to destroying the Wahara campsite when I was rudely interrupted by one of its tribesmen. Being in the condition that I was in, it was difficult to fend him off. But with sheer will to survive, I managed to defeat the enemy and then fought with all my might to tear down the campsite before finally making a bed to rest off the effects of the snake bites. I thought, while I was in the area, I would check it out a bit. After some time, I came across something strange, something I hadn't seen before, and decided to hunt it down and take it out. This little fella dropped some interesting resources. But the joys of wandering in the jungle, I stepped on something I shouldn't have, which immediately prompted me to take a little rest. Once I was good to go, I made the long journey back to the village, carrying a kit that I had found along the way. Yes, we both made it back, safe and sound, to the village. I returned to the chief the next morning to complete the second legend, and thanks to the little tape I found previously, building the drum took no time at all. I gained some trust from the chief as well. During my journey to find more legend stones, I realized that a puma was hunting me down. Well, you can't really get lucky twice in the jungle, as I once again got bitten by a spider. This time, luck was not on my side. Things were going south rather quickly. At the same time, I had to deal with a Wahara tribesman that crossed my path. With my last moments before passing out, I rushed to set up a bed to deal with the effects of the venom. On day 61, I came across a small Wahara campsite that I was able to tear down, increasing my trust with the local chief. Then, went on to find three more legend stones, one at the end of a cliff, then moved on to the next legend found close to a cave. And finally, another at the top of a hill. The following day, I found the last three legends required. One behind a waterfall. There was also one at the end of a dry riverbed. And the last one was near the cave that I had to face off against a mystical beast. Over the next three to four days, I camped near the cave with the mystical beast. The thing is, I had to present an offering of tortoise meat each day before the beast could reveal itself. Ladies and gentlemen, it was finally time to face the mighty Hakra. There he is. Oh, buddy! What? Hey! <laughs> the Hakra has been defeated. 
After a good night's rest, I set out to return to the chief's village. There, I presented the Hakra's trophy and was offered some herbs to drink. To take full advantage of the herbs, I was required to perform a ritual that set out a test for me to finally gain the trust of the local village. For this ritual, I had to hunt down specific animals with the corresponding weapons. I need to kill, okay. Do I just go and look for it? Cra oh, this is a crab. Oh, wait. I can just do this. I forgot about this. Totally forgot about it. Hey, okay, there we go. We got it. So wait. Ah, success. Okay, so what's this? Me? I have no freaking idea. Right, so I haven't seen a lizard or some sort like that. Maybe it's this. Is it? No. That didn't go well. Okay. That's not it. I think there it is. There we go. Brilliant! I've seen crabs! That's not a problem. Why do you have spoons on you? And turtles I've seen. Here's a turtle. Or tortoise. There we go. All done. Let's go! After completing the test, I was granted another trust token and gained access to a new area. As the sun began to set, I proceeded to build a bed to rest for the night. I journeyed towards my new quest where I spotted a kid sitting on the edge of a log. After speaking to him and showing him the totem, he sent down a rope that I was able to use. From there, I wandered around looking for my next destination, the airport. As I arrived at the airport, I spotted an unexpected visitor. Needless to say, this thing had to be swiftly taken care of. I then went around exploring the cabin at the airport, finding two maps on a board and a whole lot of canned foods and pearls. As night approached, I decided to camp at the airport and use the hammer for a much needed rest. It was time to bid farewell to the airport as I journeyed towards the next village. After navigating the harsh jungle terrain, I finally located the village. Upon arrival, I went straight to the chief to have a chat. Unfortunately, he didn't trust outsiders easily, stating that I would need to earn the villagers' trust before he would help me. Later that day, and for the next few days, I decided to set up a base nearby. I focused solely on building the best base I could within the time frame I had. Initially, it seemed like a simple build, but boy, was I in for one heck of a workout, gathering tons of resources to get the base done as fast as possible. It certainly felt like a bit more than I could chew. However, on day 74, I finally completed the build. It wasn't as fancy as some of my other builds, but it looked cozy and would be home for the next few days. I began the quest of gaining the chief's trust by repairing a few totems, such as the one near the village. As I made my way down a nearby waterfall, I found a few legend stones. At the bottom of the waterfall, I stumbled upon a small Vahara campsite, which I promptly destroyed. Nearby, I found another totem that needed repairing. Continuing my efforts with working on a chief's trust issues, I found a fisherman nearby, crying for no real reason. I mean, he could have crafted everything he needed, but he waited for me to do it for him. Crazy stuff! Then, I scoured the swamp area for more quests to do when I heard the most horrifying sound. Yeah. Fortunately for me, I was fully equipped to handle the situation and obtained the items needed to repair a nearby totem. After that, I stumbled upon another fisherman that I tried to help, but I didn't have all of the items required to do so. Moving on, I was able to spot two more legend stones, one in a nearby cave and the other in a mini Stonehenge-like place. That's where I also decided to set up camp to stay the night. The next day, I decided to return to the mainland to gather some resources for a fishing rod and then returned to the fisherman I had previously tried to help. After assisting him, I continued to explore more of the swamp. That's when I stumbled upon a large Wahara campsite that held two captives. I swiftly freed them both and proceeded to dismantle the campsite. Once I completed the demolition, I set up an outpost of my own as I realized there was much to do in this area. I continued searching the swamp and found two more totems to repair. Fortunately, my new outpost provided me with all the resources needed to complete these tasks. The next day, I spotted a small Wahara campsite that needed to be taken down, followed by an encounter with another caiman that met an unfortunate end. With the tips of my arrows 
Finding their mark, I took down this mighty beast. However, while wandering around, I inadvertently stepped on a spider and it instinctively lunged for my legs, injecting me with the venom that sent searing pain through my veins. Nevertheless, I pushed onwards, quickly patching myself up and journeyed towards a new area. There, I found what appeared to be Jake's and Mia's previous campsite. This place was filled with resources and a new map leading to an unknown area. I continued with the quest of gaining the trust of the local village by helping more lazy fishermen craft tools they required. Additionally, I managed to find more legend stones across the map. I also proceeded to destroy a couple of small Wahara camps as well. But then, I came across a large camp that had two village women in cages. I couldn't stand for that, so I swiftly set the captives free, dealt with the warriors who dared to challenge me, and destroyed every single structure found at the camp. I also set up an outpost while I looked for more quests to complete. Afterwards, I focused on racking up as much trust as possible by repairing more of the totems in the area and helping out the fishermen wherever possible. Additionally, I found a strange looking artifact. Not sure what it was meant for, but I kind of destroyed it. As my time here was drawing close to an end, I proceeded to search for the last few legend stones for the next couple of days. This was quite a journey as I had to travel across two or three maps in order to find the last few missing legends. Eventually, after running around like a headless chicken, I managed to find a stack of interesting pictures and the last few legend stones in this area, including another strange artifact that I destroyed. I also found a few more Mohara campsites that had to be taken down. Alrighty, it was time to take on the task of completing the legends. For the Deathbringer legend, I had to search for skeletons in a specific cave, which provided clues to unlock something new. After finding all the clues, a new deadly weapon became available to craft. Fortunately, I had all the items needed and crafted the Aztec weapon. Then, I returned to the chief and presented the weapon to him. The next legend, the Fish of Fortune, wasn't all that difficult, except for gathering the resources. You see, in order to craft the bait required, I needed to have a creepy crawly thingy that only appears when you least expect it while carrying large materials. So, you can imagine how I looked walking around my base carrying large materials just for that darn centipede to appear. Anyway, it eventually did appear and I grabbed the final item required to craft the fish bait. Then, it was off to the swamp again to find a special fish trap. Once I arrived at the location with the fish trap, I immediately placed the bait and waited for the mysterious fish to appear. Yeah, I waited for quite a while and even even took a nap, thinking that might help, but there was nada. Finally, after hours of waiting, the fish appeared early the next morning. I grabbed the fish and made my way back to the village. There, I went ahead and presented the fish to the chief, scoring a few trust points from him. Later that day, I proceeded to fulfill the Spirit Eater legend. It turns out those blue artifacts that I destroyed previously was exactly what I needed to do. There were only two left to destroy. One was found in the path leading down towards the swamp area, and the other was found between some log ramps. Returning to the chief the next day with the good news, he in turn offered me some special herbs to perform another ritual to gain the trust of the village. This ritual was kind of confusing at the beginning, but soon I got the hang of it, and all that had to be done was to catch all three fish of a certain type before I could progress. A freak? A crocs? Okay, no. I'm so confused. Oh, okay, I get it now. You see a bunch of these fishies? You'll find the one you need. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Alright, there you go. Much better. I think we can't go through these fish. Yeah, probably it's a bad Okay, or something. back in the water. Last round. It's time to go, buddy. There you go, Chief. We're all done. After completing the ritual, I was awarded another trust token. Later that day, I traveled towards a new part of the map, just beyond Jake's and Mia's campsite. There, I stumbled upon the great round village. Excited that I was finally going to see the big boss, I raced towards the entrance. However, when I got to the village, a guard stood at the entrance and wouldn't let me in, saying something about the chief being at some snake pass. The thing is, I did remember seeing a snake pass before. So, I rushed over to the location where I thought I'd see 
seen it and found a new path. I had to push over a boulder that stood in the way and then continue through the path to another mysterious tribesman who spoke about some type of trial that had to do with the sun. I was so confused. I then returned to the first campsite, wondering how I was going to figure out my next step. Suddenly, I had a revelation. The antenna I picked up a while ago. I could this use that Higgins. to fix the radio and contact Mia. Jake, it's me. Mia? It's so good to hear you. You have to find the Imala. Um, a moon cave? It seemed like I had to search for moon caves or something like that. But that had to be put on hold for a bit as I had to take care of the boat. While checking up on what could be wrong with the boat, I found out that the hull on the left side was damaged. For me to make it out of here, I had to get that fixed. So I worked on building some scaffolding to hoist the boat up so I could get to work. Once I was able to get it up, it was quite clear what needed to be done. I grabbed a few pieces of planks, added them to fill up the holes, and then finished it up with some wood resin. It was now all good to go. Alrighty, it was now time to figure out what to do with those moon caves. So over the next few days, I went in search of three moon caves. Here at the caves, I had to locate a special type of furnace that required a small fire to start up. Then, all I had to do from there was place each of the trust tokens in the furnace and wait for the magic to happen. These furnaces gave the tokens the token. a gold coating, and I believe that Sun is what was required. With some time on hand, I decided to check out one of the new structures added to the game, the Flame Keeper. Let me try this out first. It says... It just needs ember, so I'm gonna light it up here. There we go. Ritual flame herbs required. There we go! Darn it! Hello! Woo. There we go! <laughs> Let's go! Round two! I'll do like maybe three rounds. And I got you too! Hey yo! You guys gotta give me back my uh. Arrows. What a shot! Awesome. Where are they? Oh, there you go. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Come on! I can't see what's going on here. Ooh. Buddy, come on. Oh, we got one. Got two. There's a third. Come on. Oy, there we go. <laughs> I think, you know what? That's enough for me tonight. Uh, <laughs> Day 100, my friends. It was finally time to see Chief Queenie. All right, mate. I've got what you asked for. Wait, dude. What? What am I supposed to do now? Ah. Finally. Yeah. Meet Chief Queenie. Dude. Told you so. Or not? Uh. What's going on here? What? Okay, here we go. It's another ritual time. I'm so ready for this. What? What? What's going on? Broski! That's not... That's not right. You guys setting me up? Or what? Holy smokes. Uh, which way do I go? Whee! There you go. Take that! You piece of work, you! Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Uh, this guy is chasing after me! There we go! Hey, <laughs> take that, buddy! Where's your auntie? Take that! And that! I need a way out of here! Oh, son! Wait, buddy! Holy smokes! How many of you guys are here? Somebody! Where? Over here! Where, 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 where? There! Okay, okay. I'm good, I'm good. I'm coming, I'm coming! Look, there! Where?
What's going on? Holy smokes! What is going on? Am I dead or alive? Come on, come on, buddy! What the? Jeez. Ew. Did I make it? What is going on here? What? Is this a party? Did I make it to the chief? Hey, yo. Yo, chief! Is it you I've been looking for? Oh. Dude, that's it. Hey, yo, we got it going. I'm loving it. Let's go. Let's, where are we going? Hey, yo, what the? 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 Let's do this. What the freak? Oh man, it's just crazy. Crazy night. I want to be talking about it, but... Um, well... I guess this is what we need. So small. And, just waiting uh, here. Hidden from the world. I think we're good yes. to go. This will help me save. I'm coming, Mia! Your Malu will revolutionize medicine! <laughs> I'm coming! Which way, though? Ah, oh, sweet! We made it safe and sound back at the boat. Can't believe it! It's time to come home, Mia! Mia! I've got the cure! Um, how do I get in there, though? There we go. Brilliant. We it's made Jake. it! Mia, do you copy? Mia! I'm here. I'm coming! Do you have it? Yes, I have the mushrooms. They're wonderful. Great. They We're gonna change the world! Oh man. This is amazing. We finally did it. We got what we came for. We've been making it out of here. Alive! Well and alive! It's beautiful! Oh, so beautiful. <laughs>